This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. Yeah. Now, we always tell you to use our promo code DANGLE for 20% off and free shipping. And, and you might but say- But what does that even get you? What does that even get you? And we have an answer. Mm. Not only does it get you trim, if you know what I'm saying. Hey. You want to be trim come <laughs> season, right? Get talk, your beach body ready to go. Let's talk about those- those balls. That's right. Absolutely. But also, it gets you this. Jesse, can we bring up that tweet, please? We can. Ah. So, K Camel underscore Panda tweeted us and said, Hey, guys. Dangle promo saved me 46 USD. Thanks, fellas. Left SDPN name in Manscaped advert <laughs> purchase questions. Hey, thanks again. Hey, thank hey, you for doing that. That's kind of cool. And by the way, we're on the fifth generation. It features two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads, a standard one for taking on a little off the top, and then the new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. Smooth. Can you do that again? Smooth. Also features an LED light, and it's a spotlight, right? It's we like this is literally like the the Mercedes of grooming. You know, it's the highest end product yep. in man grooming. Yep. It's it's awesome that we get to have the, these guys as a sponsor. If your shower's dark, your LED spotlight will change that. And it's great. Uh navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. If you hate making a mess, don't worry. The thing's waterproof. You can shave in the shower, in the bath, or in the ocean. And it's tax season. It'll actually do your taxes. Uh, no, no. Can't guarantee that, no. but Doesn't can guarantee you 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. That's 20% 20 off and free shipping with the code DANGLE, D-A-N-G-L-E at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring house cleaning. You can also, your pants. you can be like Camel Panda. Yeah, <laughs> save money too. Let's start the show. Jesse Blake. Let's go! You okay? No. Jesse, are you okay? Yeah, I, Steve, I, like, the whole, oh, Steve, okay, I thought your reaction was the reasonable one. Because you didn't, like, okay, so when initially I heard, like, oh, the LFR is crazy and all that stuff, I watch every LFR, but I watch it, like, the next day. I'm not staying up till 1 a.m. when Drew's uploading to watch it That's and everything. Fair. So I heard, like, oh, there's some scuttlebutt about the LFR, and mm -hmm. Steve went off and all that stuff. Mm. But your reaction in the LFR wasn't, like, tears that you're facing Boston. It was actually a very... No, it wasn't nuanced, but a very loud opinion, and I think the correct opinion, that no matter who you face, it's going to be difficult. Oh, you wanted Florida instead. No, Florida's probably a better team than Boston. Mm -hmm. I'm so. that villain where, where, you know, oh, they're crazy and they're the bad guy. And oh, if you listen to what I'm really saying, though, damn, he's spitting. Yeah, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't think you had like a meltdown. I thought you had a very good analysis that, yeah, it's the Stanley Cup playoffs. Every team is well, good. Well, it was about two minutes into the video when I stopped laughing. Yeah, after after the laugh, I spit blood. Yeah, but the, the, after it, that shooting was that two minutes of laughing, and then what? Uh, it was like eight minutes of actually good hockey analysis. So for the most, part, I don't. I mean, I don't think you need the biggest hug today. You seem okay. First of all, I always need a big hug. <laughs> Everybody needs a big hug every day. Um, second of all, like, okay, I'm real mad about them playing Boston. I don't want them to. But the other option was a team that outshot them 31-4 to four in a single period last night. Can we spoiler alert? The Leafs would have probably lost to Florida. Uh, can we spoiler alert? <laughs> I There's a very good chance they lose to Boston. Yeah, because those are two good teams. Mm -hmm. It was you want a good team or you want to play a good team. It's like it's so annoying because like I really, I really put the Leafs up against... Just about anyone else in the East, except <laughs> their two most likely <laughs> first round opponents, mm -hmm. which were the Florida Panthers and the Boston Bruins. The The Bruins have owned them. They own their hearts mm -hmm. this year. Um, and I know it's the regular season, yada, yada. Uh, the Florida Panthers, for the most part, have owned the Leafs. Um, there was one game where the Leafs won, I believe. I, I'm pretty sure... Uh, I'd have to look this up, but the season series between the the Leafs and Bruins and the Leafs and Panthers combined, the Leafs are one and seven. Kill me, <laughs> please kill me immediately. Wow! And the and, Leafs are zero and seven in their last seven meetings with the Bruins. Uh, oh, I believe that. And you look at where they are in the league; they they're killers. 
They're a really good team. Carolina, I think, would give them trouble. That'd be a great series. Oh, the Leafs Rangers would be an unbelievable series. Leafs Lightning rubber match would be an unbelievable series. But it's the fucking Bruins mm -hmm. or the fucking Panthers, and now we know it's the fucking Bruins. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, and and Dude, I like, now there is there's a couple of conspiracy oh, theories the floating Islanders, around. That'd be a fun series. A couple of conspiracy theories floating around today. Capitals. Um, one involving John Tortorella, which we will get to. Mm -hmm. The other one is that the Boston Bruins. Did they put in a lot of effort no, lately? They lost on purpose, hundred percent. You think so? Absolutely. No, no NHL team is losing see, a game I don't, on purpose. I don't think no. so either, Jesse. Yeah, I don't. I I don't. That defeats the purpose of competition. Tim McAuliffe tweets things that make you go, "Hmm." The Bruins had a season low sixteen shots on net in a two nothing loss to the Caps on Monday. That's the fewest shots in a game for them in t since twenty thirteen. Tuesday versus the Senators, a season low three shots in the first period. Yeah. No. Yeah. But no. But yeah. No, let's ignore all the evidence of our eyes and ears for sure. What if another team just beat them? Yeah? What if they were simply beat? The, Le the Capitals who made the playoffs beatable. with the worst goal differential in NHL history mm -hmm. for a team that made the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I am going to, although I agree with you, Jesse, I'm going to push you on this one because you can see how people would say. No, I is, can't see how you jump to the conclusion that an NHL team is throwing two straight games. If that's what you're implying, that's I think that's a real leap of a lot. Oh, there. yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I think I think this that's a real stretch. Do you think that they can continue throwing them into the first round? Because I would think that. <laughs> maybe. Maybe they're just uh, not that great. Now, do you think the maybe Bruins? they're beatable? Uh, you, you must. Well, listen. Every team can lose. I, yeah. Looking we at watched the Bruins <laughs> on paper ruins my day. Every time. Was mid <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> it's the Steve Dangle podcast. Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> we all do that from time yeah, to time. Yeah, of course. Um, sorry, go ahead, continue, Steve. I made my point. Oh, okay. Well, I, I was just going to say listen, the Tampa Bay Lightning at their, you can argue their critical height, like the, the, the best that they were. Lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets for it was it four nothing? Yes. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. they didn't win a game. They didn't win a single they were game. Up three nothing after one and died. Mm -hmm. Just died. Now just died. Not likely that that happens in this series, but I do think it is hilarious. And I for oh, you're, one, you're not doing the follow up. What's the follow? -up? The follow up to the Lightning. Oh, they won the cup. No, last year's Bruins, the greatest oh, yeah. regular season team of all time. Lost in the first round to the Florida Panthers. Yep. What was it? Twice in four years or twice in five years, a team set the record for wins, won the President's Trophy, lost in the first round. Mm -hmm. Everybody's beatable. It's hockey. It's so random. Yep. 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 And I look at this and I think I'm Zen. I'm very Zen right now. I wish everyone would stop being so full of shit. I'm Zen. I am Zen. Embrace your fear. See, here's what Let I, the hate flow through you. I'll tell you why I'm Zen. Yeah? Why are you Zen? This is the actual inflection point for this franchise. This is where... Um, they fired their GM, eh? The, last year? Yeah, but that oh, okay. was... that. They didn't fire their GM because of um, uh, performance. They fired their GM because of a corporate power play. Wow. Right. And mm -hmm. and like if they had fired their GM due to performance, they wouldn't have offered them the extension that they offered him. Mm -hmm. Right. So that that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dubas got fired because he wanted Shanahan's job. Yeah. He's like, how do I how do I boot <laughs> Shanahan out of the corporate yeah. structure? Oh, that didn't work. Man, how did this 50 million deal, 50 million dollar deal just flow, show up on my desk? Adam. That's so 49. crazy. 49. 49. That's so crazy, man. It's not almost like he had it in his back pocket the whole time. Anyway. Almost like. Almost like. Um, but he would never. He, he would never. He would never make. No. You know, because we don't guys, believe in conspiracy theories, right? Most High guys five. make a, a, High five. a corporate power play. Jesse, you missed it. With no there backup you plan. You know, yeah. most yeah. guys yeah. make a corporate power play with no backup plan. Mm -hmm. Just like Dubas. Dubas is a super no backup plan. Oh, uh, he was free balling it. For Absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Long story short, what I'm trying to tell you is this is the most consequential set of games that the Austin Matthews era Toronto Maple Leafs will play until the last hearse. No, 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 no. Don't don't water it down. It is. No, no, it is. This oh. is this is the most consequential series. And this is the most important moment in this era. And the last time these two teams played what? in the playoffs, um, these guys were boys. Now it's time to find out whether they're men or not. 
And and I think, you know, you look at you look at the last time they played, the guys were like, you know, 22, 23 years old. They're now in their mid to late 20s. Mm-hmm. They all have big contracts, which I, some of them did back then, too. And it's time for them to decide whether or not they want to continue to play here. And I don't mean Austin. This is and I've said this for for, for months. This is it. And if they can't get through this Bruins team, it really doesn't matter that, oh, well, the salary cap screwed us or, oh, well, COVID or, oh, well, none of that matters anymore. Now it is about Austin Matthews and these guys, William Nylander, Mitch Marner, John Tavares, everybody else. It's about all of them doing this one last time to see if they can actually stick it out and make this work. And if they don't, I'm very confident there will be massive changes this offseason. Mm. And so for me, looking at this, I'm going, I actually do believe in this group. I think they're a good group. I think that they do stupid, stupid stuff. <laughs> like the second period yesterday, they, did con- they do confounding things. However, I would... <laughs> Marty Biron talking about one goal that Joseph Wolf should have had. I'm like, I think you're burying the lead there, Marty. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, got yeah. him shot 31-4. <laughs> to four. Um, I don't think it was the kid. <laughs> I think that... They we- reset the shots, by the way. It, it came out to 29 to 4. Oh, whatever. Man. The NHL went back and recounted. Oh, that's nice. Whatever. That's yeah. My point in, in all of this is saying that, guys, you're about to witness whether or not you could witness the end of an era or you could witness the capstone, an incredible moment Good of word. this era. Good word. And I think that is something as a Leaf fan to get excited about. The Leafs, guys, the Leafs were always going to have to go through Boston. Always going to have to go through Boston. Mm. It was always going to have to happen. And they weren't able to, to use your words, or you know, uh, earlier in our careers, slay the dragon earlier in the careers. But Brad Marchand is now 35 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and has only ever won a cup as a role player. Patrice Bergeron. <laughs> wow, true. Actually true. Krejci's gone. Patrice Bergeron is no longer there. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't mean that Charlie Coyle and, and Pavel Zaka, who are fantastic players, are. we've been talking, raving about these guys. Mm-hmm. But my point is, now, now is the time. Now the tables are a little bit more even. You've got a little bit more maturity on your side. You have run one around. You've done it. And I'm going to be looking for a few things. We need Austin Matthews to be dominant. We need Willie and Morgan Riley to be their typical playoff dominant as well. Where's Willie gone? Well, and this is the thing. Willie has been, of the three of those guys, the most consistent playoff performer. If you go back and you look through Leafs history since those three guys got here, Willie is the guy that always shows up and always performs at at least a point a game. And last night I was talking to someone there. They showed the game score. Labushkin was last. Riley was second last. And they're like, I don't know about this Labushkin thing. Riley's right there. I don't care who he plays with. At some point, it'd be nice to get a good result. Mm -hmm. And he put those up in the playoffs last year. He did. He's a monster. And we now know. If he does not have a good playoff, they're dead. And the last thing I'm looking for is Mitch Marner to really come in and show what he can do in a tough series, like a physically tough series. Because Mitch Marner really plays well in the perimeters. Like he really does perimeter hockey well. Uh, the problem is that the Boston Bruins are really good at defending he scored. that. Yeah, 100%. But they're, they're, they're good at defending that. And he's going to have to drive the net. With the puck, he's going to have to shoot. He's going to have to not overthink things. There is a a huge... I, this isn't me putting the pressure on Mitch Marner. I think he knows. If what? if he scores... What? If he scores, they win. If he if he is putting up points, they're winning. And This is me putting the pressure on Mitch Marner. Okay. This is, okay. So the, the 800-pound gorilla that you feel on your back um, every time you get on the ice for a Stanley Cup playoff game, it's not actually an 800 pound gorilla. It's the back of your Jersey. The name Marner. No, the number 16. Every time you pick up your Jersey, you look at the front. That's your childhood. That's your childhood right there. This is what you have always wanted. You turn it around. Mm -hmm. It's your friggin' name above the amount of games you need to win to achieve the thing that you want to achieve. Best you've done is five. I don't want to put pressure on Mitch Marner. Not not to not to be uh Don Draper about this. That's what the money is for. Star money, star expectations. If he 
Is regular season Mitch Marner in games five, six, and seven? If he's 100-point guy, if he's 30-goal best playmaker they have guy, why shouldn't they win? Oh, they'll win the series. if, if he Of plays course that. they'll win the damn yeah. series. That's what I'm, I'm saying is that like... That's what we need. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Like, do, do you need great hockey players or elite athletes? I think the answer is elite athlete. Elite athletes have to be better at, they're better at something different. And that something different is these moments, these situations. If you're an incredible hockey player, except for when it matters, then you're not an incredible hockey player. <laughs> we need this. This city needs it. Your legacy needs it. You need it. Your teammates need it. These guys that you fought with, bled with, cried with forever need you. And that goes for Willie. And, and goes Austin. For Morgan goes for Austin. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like Austin's been consistently awesome in the playoffs. No, I mean. He's been better re recently. Especially in Mo Montreal was really bad. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And I think they were able to ISO him because Tavares went down early and then you stapled Phil Deneau to him. Yeah. But you can't win. Tavares still makes 11 mil last time I checked. Mm -hmm. All those guys, it all, listen, the depth is better than it has been in previous years. It all comes back to if the stars don't do it, they're dead. One thing if they do it, there's a real good chance they win. One thing with Mitch Marner last night, uh, I shocked that it's reached this point, but Max Domi wasn't in the lineup and he's been an incredible X factor for them with that line with Bertuzzi, Domi, Matthews. And Mitch Marner seems to be a lot more comfortable recently with the Tavares line. Yep. So I wonder come game one against Boston, like if Mitch just performs better because he's not in this role with Matthews anymore. I hate those two together a whole big bunch. Why? Uh, you said that at the beginning of the video and I was, I was lying in bed watching it this morning because that's what I was watching. Mm-hmm. I took my daughter to school. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take a lie down. So I watched the video and you said you don't want them together. Nope. And I, I've been I've been pro Max Domi all year, despite all the people tweeting me stats saying he's bad at hockey. I'm like, well, Matthew's <laughs> got a, sure got a lot of goals. Man, um, you, you were early on that. Uh, you really were. Well, I, and and I'm by a lot of people's standards. He's still not a good hockey player. I don't see what they see. I love Max Domi. I think I he's think, spectacular. I think you're losing the plot against the But my point, <laughs> my point is, haters. Okay. it's, it's my not point about is. putting all the Let best. Let us digress. We have an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not about putting all the best players together. It's about putting the best lines together. So what they is found it, it, I thought. So what is it about, and, and Matt, you know, obviously Domi wasn't there, but what is it about Marner and Matthews together now, which has worked so well in the past, including a 60-goal season, mm -hmm. uh, and a good chunk of the goals this year. Why? Uh, when the mob wants to get you, uh, they track your A to B. They find out where your morning starts and where you're going. And when the Bruins wake up, the Bruins mafia wakes up. Marner's A, Matthews is B. Marner has the puck, and it's his job to get the puck from A to B. And it's the easiest thing to shut down for teams that are worth uh, watching. <laughs> a lot of teams can't do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of teams can't do it. Uh, there were shifts last night against the Panthers where the Florida Panthers didn't let Matthew stick touch the ice. Uh, it's just, he's too big to body off the puck. He's too strong, but his job is to get into open areas, get into spaces, and they're just lifting them all day long. They're all over him like a weighted blanket. Um, and they're leaving Mitch to the perimeter the whole time he's on the perimeter, he's skating, he's skating, he's skating. And we're happy that the Leafs have Joel Edmondson. All these guys have Joel Edmondson too. They they all have some sociopath who's willing to put uh, just shards. Carbon through. Carbon fiber. Yeah, through, through your, your back. Vertebrae. Mm -hmm. And Matthews is just getting the shit beat out of him in front. And over a seven-game series, that's going to take forever. What we saw over the last month or so with Bertuzzi, Matthews, and Domi all together, man, they would just pull a rabbit out of a hat. Um, and it, it didn't always have to go through one guy. They're, they're chaos. The other thing I want to throw out there is Max Domi is not going to lie down for anybody. No. And there's a toughness. Neither is Tyler Bertuzzi. So there's a toughness to that line. 
when, I think that's who when, Matthews needs to play with. When Domi's on it. Yeah. That's who Matthews needs to play with. That's, um, you know, I don't really know if their styles mesh. I mean, they're elite players. They, like, they you will, mean Marner Matthews? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're elite players. They will always pull off magic together over the long run. Mm-hmm. But during these, you know, battles of friggin' attrition, um, you need a chaos, a chaotic battering ram of a first line. Um, and when there's enough chaos and enough distraction, Matthews will kill you. He will eat you alive. He's the best goal scorer in the sport. What about what? No, no. Stop saying all these lesser thans. He's the greatest goal scorer in hockey. Mm -hmm. He needs distraction, right? He needs room. He needs room. Um, Tavares is a capable goal scorer, capable board battler. Marner's a really dynamic player, dynamic skater. And you can put them with either one of Nyes or McMahon and they'll be fine. That'll be a great line. Third line, Holmberg has upped his game, knows how to be a dick. Great job. Uh, And then beyond that, you're just figuring it out. You're just, you know, placing role players at that point. Um, You know, oh, sorry, Nylander. Yep. Uh, Should have thrown it there. I was (laughs) was like, wait, who am I missing? Role player. Sorry, outside of, yeah, Nylander with Holmberg. And then it's like, take your pick, right? You have the fourth line that plays like a fourth line. Cool, good. I'm not worried about the fourth line. I don't think that's going to be the uh, the the come to Jesus savior. Oh, thank goodness for the fourth line. You need a capable fourth line to get through four rounds of the playoffs, but that's that's not exactly what carries you there. All right. Um, you know, so then you just need someone who is a positive contributor, uh, whether it's McMahon, Yarn Croak. I think Could McMahon should nice. have that spot on the second line. I'm with you with if, JT. If he's healthy and can skate. It, it, that's the thing. That's it, the thing. It, one, once we reach Saturday, if he's able to play, I think he deserves that spot over Nyes just by, based on how they both played in this calendar year. I agree with you. And Nyes is more, um, his game better suits a bottom six role at this mm-hmm. point in his career. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll probably be a, like a first or second line player, but not yet. Yeah, and the the conditioning thing you always bring up with Nyes, like maybe in limited minutes where he can just run around and then lose all of his breath and then go back to the bench is probably the best situation for him mm-hmm. as opposed to like the second line where he has to play some serious minutes. So I hope McMahon is like, fingers crossed, he's healthy for Saturday. Even if he's not 100%, I think like 90% McMahon is still still dynamic on, for that second line. He's, he's a huge factor. Mm-hmm. It's... um. It, and it's going to be one of those things where I think um, the the Leafs are going to have to, like, if you look at the Bruins, David Pasternak has scored almost 50 more points than the next closest Bruin. Dude, I, I, can't, I can't believe their roster to look at it. 110 points for Pasternak. Next closest is Marshan with 67. And then the next closest is Charlie be. Coyle, 60. It has to be 67. Has to be. Now, they have good scoring th- spread throughout the lineup. Like, I'd say that, you know, a bunch of guys in their 30s and 40s in terms of points is not a bad thing to have. But David Pasternak, especially against the Leafs, is a an absolute mm-hmm. weapon and has been for time immemorial. Like, when he was a young player. Well, and these, these penalties, they keep taking. A lot of hooks, a lot of holds, a lot of I got beat, so I'm going to grab you around the waist. Matthew Nyes... I, yep. He's got to stop doing it. <clears throat> oh, dude, Bertuzzi, the amount of offensive zone penalties this guy takes, brutal. That uh, brutal. that goaltender interference thing last Oh, uh, And like, like, I'm like, in a hop behind the goalie. Like, what, what are we are doing, thinking? Tyler? What are we doing? Like, that was awful, listen, awful stuff by Tyler. Yeah, if you're if you're getting a piece of a guy in a scrum or whatever, yeah, no, fill your boots. I don't care. Um, there were uh, two scrums where the Panthers came out of it with a power play, and I'm like, all right, yeah, sure, it's mm. a it's a league, I guess. Um, but, uh, the, like just the hooks, the holds, the trips, the goalie interference in the offensive zone. Like those are unforced errors. Yes. A hundred percent. And these are the types of things that in the playoffs go down, but you can bet on the Leafs and the Bruins each game getting two to three penalties each. Yep. And what concerns me is David Pasternak, his 12 power play goals and the Leafs anemic, terrible penalty kill. It's brutal. And so they, so it's, it's, if you're going to take a penalty, it better be worth it because the types of penalties that they are taking, even though 
They are regular season penalties, and we all know it changes in the playoffs. You, If you're sitting in the box for something stupid in the offensive zone, like what Bertuzzi did last, it was a, just a brain fart. Like yeah. I, I'm just shocked that he did it. Um, or what Domi did the previous game where it was a hooking right before overtime and against Detroit. Trip, yeah. Yeah, or tripping, whatever. It was. You know what I mean? Like yeah. stick around place it shouldn't be. Um, that's the kind of shit that's going to kill them against the Bruins. That is the thing of, of all the things. And I told you, I'm very Zen. If I'm worried about anything, if anything keeps me up at night, it's that stuff because the Bruins will kill you for that. It will They're known or, for that win or lose the series. Yep. It'll win or lose the series. And there's going to be a, a shitload of calls in the first two, three games. I'll and then it'll, that way. yeah. And then it'll even out, like it'll slow down by game five, six, seven. The intensity of hockey ramps up the infractions ramp up the rate at which those infractions are called drops dramatically there's just uh i don't know how you would ever ever prove that i don't know how you would ever get a number for that what you would need is a stat website willing to track it and qualified officials willing to offer their expertise to the cause You'd have to be like, that's a call, that's a call, that's a call, that's a call. You'd have to do, you'd have to have the regular season evidence to compare to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, but like, we all know, we all like. It's a feel you get. It's a feel you get. You just watch a, every, you just watch of a, ooh. lots of attempted murder and mm -hmm. yeah, they're already settling into it. You know, Nikita Kucherov just allowed to like shorten guys' careers. It's fine. It's fine. Well, and and so that when we talk about this line and when we talk about this 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 matchup, that part freaks me out. The other part is, um, I've loved how Ilya Samsonov has played second half of this year. I don't I don't know as a Leaf fan how you can't. I'm concerned about Joseph Wall. Oh, he, when he's come back uh, since he's come back, he's been Matt, and it's so bad. Um, and it's not because he's a bad guy. Everybody, I know we're all fans here. Uh, oh, it's I because he's his performance hasn't been up to par. I don't know how you don't have Martin Jones as your backup um, come game one. Before this season, how many games did Joseph Wall start in his career? Oh, God. 12? I think, yeah, maybe 10 or 12. And then, like, most of them were in the playoffs last year. 11 regular season games. Wow. Yeah. So I think we, if we're like disappointed in Joseph Wall's play so far, it's he's not an NHL product yet. This wow. is his first, first full season as an NHL tandem starter. But we've seen him play better games than this, and he, he was yeah. incredible before he got hurt. In about like uh, 20 game sample size. Yeah. Like, oh, less, less, I think. No, and I'm, if you add the postseason too, and the beginning oh. of this year, and those set in those eleven games, it's like twenty game sample size. We're like, oh my god, Joseph Wall, established starter. No, it's twenty games. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be a long journey for this kid to really establish himself as an NHL goaltender. And right now, he's struggling. And who do you? And I think that's fine. Who do you trust coming in cold though? Martin Jones or Joseph Wall? Good lord. I think uh, Ilya Samsonov. Well, that's what I mean, though, is if Ilya has a bad game or he gets injured, who do you trust coming in cold? Oh. I think I think it's Ilya Samsonov. And what once from there, then you're panicking because <laughs> those options aren't great. Oh, oh man. I got to say, Martin Jones's numbers this year are pretty good. Yeah. But when was the last when was his last game? Right. Even. That's a good question. I mm -hmm. think three weeks ago. Yeah. Right now. Right now. You you start Joseph Wall like there's not I don't think yeah. it's a debate that he's your backup goalie. He's been starting all these games like. He's he's the goalie. He's gonna go in there. Too late now. So, and yeah, okay. fingers cr fingers crossed. Nothing happens to Ilya. But like, yeah. Well, like I mean, if we're all right, if we're panicking based on like recency, like all right, Wool starts game one then. <laughs> and uh, oh no, you don't start. <laughs> no, no, that's well, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Because yeah, Samsonov yeah, yeah. had like a tough last <laughs> couple of games. Yeah. Um, this is your bed, and I think by the time you get to Jones, it's probably too late. Okay. Right. Um, looking at the save percentages, and the, so Martin Jones played 21. Joseph Wool played 25. Um, Joseph Wool and Martin Jones have essentially the same save percentage, 907 and 908. And the goals against average is a 270 and a 294. 294 for, for Joe Wool. Uh, Joseph Wool is 12 and 11. Martin Jones is 11 and 7. The team uh, does not play great in front of Joseph Wool. Eh? I don't think they trust him. Kind of like how they played in front of Ilya when he was battling. So what's what's the game plan there? Allow 30 shots a period? <laughs> right. <laughs> that's like, a good question. I don't, I don't like, know. I just don't know how that's on. 
Yeah. yeah. How was that Wolves fault? And like, the well, he should have had that that save, the twenty that, shot of the period. Uh, like, <laughs> come on, one out of the five because he got friggin' shelled. Yeah. When it was thirty four shots before they stat corrected to twenty nine, it was the second most shots ever they allowed in a period in the history of the franchise. That's been around for a hundred plus years. That's your last <laughs> full lineup game before the playoffs. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah. It's, it was awful, and like I I don't want to blame Joseph Wall for that situation yeah but i don't think he's been great no. like at all and and so you know we we have to look at this like you have to look at it like the way the bruins do you've got an obvious upgrade uh, uh for both goalies swayman and olmark uh the only reason they didn't really i think that they didn't beat the panthers is they didn't move off olmark fast enough when he got injured last year yeah who's their like game one starter is it swayman Feels well like yeah they, and they tried to trade olmark so i don't know yeah well, i don't know man it's going to be a... Uh, I mean, it's not like... <clears throat> like, sometimes when a team moves off of their starter, you know it's a mistake, and you're like, oh, good. Mm -hmm. Now we can feast on the other guy, too. But the Bruins, you chase Swayman, and it's like, oh, sh fuck. <laughs> yeah, but I think <laughs> I think you got to have it. Yeah, but the, the, the Panthers made it work. Panthers did it. Panthers did it. Panthers squeak in, and they, and they do it, and they have a great goaltender themselves. I think... The one thing I'll say about this this team, this Leafs team, is they have not felt like they get shaken as easily this year. Yeah, when I they, mean, they allowed two goals in 10 seconds last night, but I, I know what you mean. Three in three minutes. Yeah, Fuck. that that to me is brain fart. That to, that to me isn't shaken, right? That's not focused. No. It's not like, like where fear. You, they were, before it was fear. Yes, you can tell the wheels are falling off, and they're terrified, and not only are they dying in this game, they're never coming back. Um, you just don't feel that with this group. I I really do like this group. I hate that they're playing Boston. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jesse, and, do you hate that they're playing Boston? Uh, no, I think the way we kicked this off, well, when I was talking about your LFR, when we kicked this off, it's every team is good. Like who are you? Like you want the Hurricanes, you want the Rangers, yeah. Like you want the Lightning. Yeah. Who hasn't? You want to go to the Minnesota. West? You want to play Dallas? Like I don't know. Like yeah. every team is good if you're in the playoffs. Like I uh, tough teams all around. I do appreciate, um, you know, a lot of actors come from L.A. Obviously in New York, and I'm 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 thinking more of them should come out of the Massachusetts area. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Why do the you say that? The amount of yeah. Bruins fans who are like, oh, I don't know about this series. Shut up. Oh, you must be so traumatized from six consecutive wins dating back to before your dad was born. Leafs have not beat the Bruins in the playoffs since 59. You know how long ago 1959 was? The Leafs have won four cups since then. Shut up. Do you want Justin Fisher, our social media manager, do you want his 1959 trivia? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh... It's, it, I guess it's not trivia. We can just do 1959 fun facts. Mm -hmm. uh, Montreal beats Toronto four games to one to win the Stanley Cup final. Oh, no. <laughs> Who? <laughs> what, what famous uh, dictator established power? In 1959? Yeah, we could do a little trivia on Would this. Would that be uh, Fidel Castro? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> He seemed about right. Wow. wow. Is it either that or the guy from Egypt? No, you got it. it. Yeah. That's it. No, Fidel yeah. Castro. Stop guessing. You're <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. All right. What popular toy was introduced in America? Barbie. That's correct. Hey. Let's go. You guys are two for two on 1950. Wow. 59 was a big year. <laughs> you knew. The huh? Leafs, Leafs didn't even win the cup that year. No, um, they lost 4 1 to Montreal. I just learned that. Two states were introduced. To the United States. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so Hawaii? You got oh, one? Hawaii? Yeah. And, like, is it a state or a territory? Because if it's Puerto Rico, I'm going to be really upset. No, no, no. Puerto no. Rico is like, not a state. Actual states. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say... So, yeah, at the beginning of 1959, there weren't 50 states That's in right. America. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Simpsons here because Abe Simpson had a 49 flag or 49 star American flag because he refused to acknowledge Missouri. <laughs> it can't be Missouri. I don't know. So we got one. I'll say New Mexico. You said your first one was uh, oh, because Hawaii. Oh, because new Hawaii. in the name. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to yep. say New York. Okay, so no, I don't know. Incorrect. Uh, Hawaii and Alaska. 
Oh, so the, really? The, the continental territory. United States was established, yeah. and then they brought in oh. Alaska and Hawaii. And I thought they had Alaska before that, but I guess it wasn't a state. It wasn't a state, yeah. In yeah. 1959, uh, Alaska and Hawaii became the 49th and 50th uh U.S. states. Because the Brits were like, hey, Canada, get fucked. We're going to give it to these guys for no good reason. Um, I don't think you'll ever get this. What took photos of Earth from orbit? Can you Do you know the name of the machine that was in space that took took pictures of... Sputnik? No. Not Sputnik. No. Uh, the polaroid droid I explorer don't know. six. Oh, i would never oh, know that justin Rowe, explorer six takes the first photos of earth from orbit cool. so there's something that happened and lastly um this was invented it is a machine that replicates things xerox Photocopy. A photocopy. Yeah, Xerox. Oh. <laughs> Probably by Xerox. Yeah. A, the photocopier was invented and released in 1959. Wow. There you go. 1959 and, trivia. Hey, I love 1959 <laughs> trivia. So weirdly specific. And Steve, what uh, Leafs fact is? Uh, why are we bringing this up? Uh, the Leafs have not beaten the <laughs> Bruins in a playoff series in six attempts since 1959. Jesse, when could women vote? In Canada. 1920s. <laughs> what about... No, no. Uh, First World War. First World War and for both. And women like, yeah. like, like, Do you want to know Canada or America? I don't... It, 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 Which one do you want? It Both. 1916, I'm going to guess, for Canada. Uh, women's right to vote in Canada looks like it's around 1916. Yeah. Oh, so, the, so the Leafs, I mean, that's pretty uh, like uh, recent uh, then. Oh, 1918. I 1918. That's yeah, just a quick Google mm -hmm. around then. Yeah. I'm trying to think 1914 of... 1914 maybe-ish, somewhere. Yeah. My family had been in Canada for, I think, four years. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Dude, yeah, like, there was a whole debate, by the way, when that happened. Is It, it went to the Canadian courts about, are women considered persons? Should look that one up. Fun times. Anyway, the, uh, the thing is... Um, you know, this is going to be a series that makes or breaks this this era, and I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I'm so excited for this. Let's bring. Why not face the boogeyman right now? Why not? I feel like I've said that every other time they've played them, but you're right, Adam. Mm -hmm. And Julian McKenzie was saying, Steve, no. What LFR needs to be is embrace the fear. Yeah. I am not going to lie to people and sugarcoat and be like, I'm not scared. I'm quite scared, but I'm going to embrace the scared and try to face my boogeyman, face my fears. Now, I'd like to quote Dune 2. Yeah? Fear is the little death that brings total <laughs> obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. I thought the quote was, uh, don't fuck the bucket. <laughs> no, it was not. I, th I also <laughs> thought we were going there for a second. That would have been much better. Also, don't do that. Is uh, <laughs> is Dune good? I haven't seen it. Dune 2 is, Dune 1 is good. Dune 2 is spectacular. I felt did, like a kid again. Did, how long? Because it's like two and a half hours, right? Oh, it's like three. Did you watch the whole thing in one sitting? Yes. I, <laughs> I actually purposely didn't drink any fluids for like four hours before it. Because I was like, well? I'm sitting down this whole way. Did you get the bucket? I didn't get the bucket. The bucket was sold out. I was going to bring it in. Oh, no, yeah. the bucket's not available in Canada. What? Oh, that's why I couldn't yeah. get it. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought it was sold out. Yeah, I know that's... Bo that apparently, uh, Deadpool is going to make one. Uh, but it's going to be... the Ryan bucket. Reynolds' The mouth. hole in the bucket apparently is going to be in the bottom. <laughs> <Ew>. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which is amazing. Uh, anyway. Sure. It really is... Win or go kaboom. Way, way, way more than it was last year when Dubas got kicked to the curb. And had, had Dubas stayed, it would have gone kaboom in June last year. Yeah, like at, at the end of the day, um, the guy who made the decision to fire Dubas is still there. Mm -hmm. The president has been the same guy for 11 years. If they lose this, it's going to be explosive. Yep. Yep. Um, but it doesn't mean they'll be bad. It just means a bit of a change of plan. Hockey's greatest duos at Tim Hortons. We, we warned you about this. We told you it was coming. Introducing Hockey's greatest duos trading cards. Each card features two players, including NHL legends, retired stars, and women superstars, all interconnected in special ways. Steve, you picked these up. I did. On the way. 
in Ajax. Um, and you can find uh, a collect to win card for a chance to win a Hyundai Elantra oh. or venue too as well. So let's open this up. Let's see if we want a car. We are opening up our packs Yo, I'm for anybody listening. What? Oh, Braden Shen. Okay, no, but who's the duo? What? What? I got... Oh, on the other... It's on the uh, other side. I got Braden Shen and Jordan Cairo. Nice. And... St. Louis connection. Austin Matthews! Hey! Oh! And on the other side, Johnny T, his daddy, John Tavares. Nice. I uh, got Seth Jarvis... And I, with my whole heart, thought the other one was going to be Patrick Marlowe, but it's not. <laughs> it's Sebastian Ajo. Oh. For a okay. little Carolina connection. We got, oh, Adam, you'll like this. UC Soros Woo. and Roman Yossi. Oh, because the Nashville connection. And then I got a, I got an insert. This is a special card. What's that? It's, uh, it's Rank Rivals. Hmm. Okay, who are the ring so rivals? It's actually a PWHL card. Nice. Oh, no, um, no. Or PWHPA cards. So right. I guess this is before the PWHL. Wow. Uh, Emirates Mashmeyer in net, as well as Anne Rene Debian. Oh, there you go. There you go. Oh, Nothing my third card, me. by the way. I also had a third card. Uh, rookie Connections, Austin Matthews again, and Tage Thompson Ooh. on the Blues. Oh, what? right. Because that was before the O'Reilly trade, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Pretty cool. Okay, now wow. I got, I've got, I've uh, got to start off my PWHPA card is uh, Aaron Frankel and uh, Matty Rooney, Mad Dog Rooney. Oh! As you know, uh, so there's that. Now we've got a couple of, uh, now I've got a, a, a singular Trevor Zegris, but also connected to Mason McTavish. Hey. You know, for the Ducks of the future. And then, of course, uh, I got... This is cool. So Jack Eichel and Clayton Keller. What are they linked by, you wonder? What? They're linked by the number nine. Oh! Yeah, see? <laughs> and that's what it is. That's what's fun about this. It's like, wait a second. What are they linked by? Uh, uh, and Eichel they're Americans who have to fight over it every time they play together. <laughs> mm. <laughs> there you go. That's right. Maybe they should just wear 99. Like, what would be the problem? No problem. No, just wear nine, two nines. What notable person has ever... Okay, other than Wolf Payman. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so here's the thing. Uh, these are... Two hockey icons on every single card. Uh, rivals, teammates, family, connected like never before. It's the new Tim's Hockey Greatest Duos cards. And you can get them right now at Tim Hortons, along with Tim Bits, which Steve picked up for the office today. Thank Woo. you, Steve. Appreciate that. No problem. Let's get our conspiracy theory hats on. Jesse, you made a video about this last night. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about John Tortorella pulling his goalie against the Detroit Red Wings in overtime when... Pittsburgh's entire season was on the line. No, well, no, no, it wasn't overtime. It was no, oh, it wasn't overtime. It was, was pre-overtime. It was tied one-one in tied the third period. That's, that's why it it's important, yeah. right? So yeah, go ahead, take it. What? Take what? Take it. Talk, talk to me about it. Oh, the did it happen? What did happened? Tortorella? <laughs> did Tortorella <laughs> in purposely sink the Penguin season? If Philadelphia, did Philadelphia say you can't have it because we can't have it either? Setting up the play. Ah, uh, so so it's it's one one in the third period. There's about uh, I want to say it was four eleven ish on the clock, and as they are in a timeout for the Flyers, uh, the Flyers are in a TV timeout in their game versus the Caps. In that timeout, that's when John Tortorella made the decision to pull the goalie. Mm. As they're in that timeout, simultaneously the Detroit Red Wings tie the game against Montreal. Uh, Canadians to force overtime, meaning the Detroit Red Wings are going to pick up a point and eliminate the Philadelphia Flyers. So in that moment, the puck is being dropped. The Flyers go about 30 seconds to a minute elapses in their game time. The Caps go to the other end, score an empty netter. So apparently it's 30 seconds of real time. Uh, ish. ish. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, where, I did some like serious digging on this to find uh, a couple of, uh, like a side by side to actually verify that it happened in real time. And and this is what I pulled from the ESPN feed of the actual play. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see Kevin Weeks there in the ESPN studio. And on the <laughs> left side of the screen, you have, <laughs> you have the as it says four three, but it says seven seconds left in the third ish but that's the moment that Detroit scores to tie the game and on the right side of the screen 
is the Flyers game in the timeout when Tortorella pulls the goalie. So we know and, and that. Wait, and to the right of that is the Bruins <laughs> intentionally throwing their game against the Sens. Yeah. So we know that in the moment when John Tortorella said, I'm going to pull the goalie, he didn't know that Detroit had tied it exactly the moment that he decided to pull the goalie. So the pull the goalie thing is all fair. And where we get into did he try and screw the Pens and Red Wings is he left the goalie out of the net. Right. So if he decided here and he says, somebody in his ear says, Detroit, Detroit's going overtime. They got a point. We're eliminated. Uh, you can just win the game normally. Does he decide to put uh, Urson back in the net? Does he have an earpiece in, though? I think I think, I think he does. Because he admitted after, the, if we want to play the audio from I the do. press conference, we can play that. He admitted that when the empty netter went in is when the video coach told him. So he was being fed info about the game during the game. Well, like Sheldon Key, for example, does not wear an earpiece. He has Dean Chenoweth, I believe mm -hmm. it is, um, who does the little wrist microphone mm -hmm. thing. And he's... Other guys on the bench are mic'd up. The head coach is not necessarily. Right. So when I when I say like somebody told him, it, the assistant coach who's talking to the video coach tells John Tortorella. Mm -hmm. So John Tortorella says that that happened as the empty netter went in. After it went in, he's told like, hey, Detroit went to overtime. We're eliminated. So I'm just wondering, did Tortorella decide to not put the goalie back in? Or leave him out of the net once he knew? And did he, in fact, know while it was out of the net? Or is he telling the truth here and he didn't find out until after the goal was scored? See, <clears throat> I'm going to point something out, Jesse, because a lot of people are suggesting Don John Tortorella did this on purpose to screw the Penguins and the Red Wings and, the, and just be spiteful. Mm -hmm. What you're suggesting is scandalous. Yeah. It's not, it? oh, yeah, he owned them. Oh, Flyers and Penguins rivalry. Isn't he so cheeky? No, that's point shaving, actually. No, and it's not. It's an enormous fucking right it is. He intentionally lost a hockey game. Yeah, he man. He didn't int he was trying to win a hockey game, is how he phrases it. Like it's not that he was intentionally trying to lose. He put his team at a six on five advantage to try and win the game. It's not. Well, like, why doesn't everyone do this thing? Well, I in think I think in this particular case, I I actually agree with John and with Jesse on this mm -hmm. one. What is he going to do? You have to you have to go for it. You must go for it, yeah. right? Because you got to hope that something magical happens in the other game. Now, is it Your funny that he screwed? Is it funny that he screwed Pittsburgh and Detroit? Hilarious. Yes, I think it's hilarious, especially Pittsburgh, uh, because they're cross town or they're cross state rivals, and they should be and whatever. But I actually don't believe that John Tortorella is the kind of guy who's like, you know what? Let's point shave and fuck these guys. Yeah. I don't I, believe, that's the right, one boys. thing I don't believe. I don't go up there and lose. <laughs> like, I just don't think that's a Tortorella no thing. Shot. Go so, ahead and play the, the audio. Though. Here's what he said post game. In regards to the, the goalie pull, were you getting info about the status of the Detroit game or was that, were you solely focused on this one? I, I got info on the Detroit game right after they scored their empty netter. I think it, I happen, I think it happened pretty close together. But I was pulling them. I'm pulling them. And that was the right time to pull them. I uh, didn't know anything was going on with Detroit at that time. But immediately after that, uh, our video guys told us that Detroit just went to overtime. Mm. Who's this idiot? Who's this idiot? <laughs> Get off the screen! I like... I like the fact that this happened. This was a fantastic race. Yeah. Um, all the way through. I know people are pissed at him today. <laughs> Listen, uh get mad at him uh, for the right you, reasons. You, Detroit Let's fans stop. and Pittsburgh fans, you can get mad at John Tortorella, or you can be honest with yourselves and say that both of your teams were pretty flawed. Um, you didn't have a great shot at this at the beginning. You were always gonna be a seven eight seed. And I'm, I'm refusing to call these wild cards anymore because there's nothing wild about that card. No. Fuck off with that, please. Um, you're seven, eight seeds, and you were always going to be fighting it till the end. And I know that Detroit went on a tear at the beginning of the year, and that's cool. But like, what happened after? They became themselves. I know that Pittsburgh had a bit of a tear in the last month. But what, were, what about all the other months where they were basically themselves? Guys, if hmm? you're pissed... What you should be pissed about is that your hockey teams let the Washington Capitals, who are old and bad and have the worst goal differential in NHL playoff history, 
They got in and you didn't. You should be pissed at your GMs. You should be pissed at the system. Uh, you should not maybe make the signings that they, we warned you about Justin Hall. We warned you about Graves in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. These guys, like literally, Dubas needs to, and and I think Iserman does too. Um, I know from what I understand anyway, there is there is significant pressure in Detroit to make the playoffs. So this is a huge L. This is this like more than Pittsburgh. Detroit is one team that you should keep an eye on, not because like Steve Eiserman's in trouble or anything like that, but the Illich family is like, we have this beautiful arena that everybody acknowledges is the best in the entire sport, and it hasn't seen a playoff game. If this what year, are we doing? If this year isn't it, which I don't think it is, next year might be. I, I think you're on the clock, and I think with Dubas and, and, and Fenway Sports Entertainment, uh, I don't think Mike Sullivan's a bad coach. He's probably the Olympic USA head coach or whatever, but you've got to figure out what you want to do with Sydney's last years here. Because frankly, the team, no matter how many times I got tweeted, no, the team's good, the team's good, and, and all the way down the stretch going, oh, Pittsburgh's going to make it. But no, they're not. They were never a playoff team. They were never that good. Sidney Crosby's good. Surround him with good players. Michael Bunting's a great star. What a great time. Man. He's been awesome since yeah. he went, showed up in Pittsburgh. Full marks time, for that one. It is time to cut the dead weight in Pittsburgh. There's a lot of players that just don't contribute much. They show up, they get dressed, they don't do much, they go home. Enough. Enough. They got to figure out that goaltending situation a little bit better. I know Nadelkovich was a really good, had a really good stretch there. Really good stretch is not really good, guys. It's not good enough. You need a full year. And it, or, or do you say to Sydney, listen, uh, uh, we're we're a couple years away from being a couple years away. What do you want to do? I mean, like you can, Adam. How are you going to rejig this? It, here's here's why I think um, you're completely wasting your breath. What do the Pittsburgh Penguins, who are old, mm -hmm. need to do? Get younger, get better. How do you get younger and get better with a bunch of old guys under contract? Uh, you try to trade and retain. You move off of guys. Yeah. I don't know how you do that in this case. Mm -hmm. Kyle Dubas has not been an NHL executive for, well, he's been an NHL executive for 10 years now. What defined his time in Toronto? Loves his guys. Not moving off of his guys. Enjoy. I think I think you you have to take, like Pittsburgh, for instance, has to take a good hard look at Carlson. Has to take a good hard look at um, that. Like that Carlson trade might go down as one of the worst additions in history. And it's not because Eric Carlson's not a good player. It's because like you have Chris Letang. Well, well move off of Letang then. Yes. If you're going to bring in Carlson, Letang's got to go. Well, Letang can't go because him and Crosby and Malkin wanted to stay together. At some point, you got to be ruthless here. And that's what I'm asking Fenway Sports and Entertainment and Kyle Dubas to actually do. I've never seen Kyle Dubas be real, really ruthless, to be honest. Well, and I think in, in fairness to Kyle, he alluded to being ruthless and it got him fired. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that couldn't it may not be all his fault, but I, I'm it's time for things to get real in Pittsburgh. It really is. And Penn's fans, I'm not trying to dump on you at all. Um, I think they that know. I think they know. They know. I think Detroit. I, if you if Derek Lalonde's job is not on the line a little bit here, I think Detroit spent a pile of money. I think their pro scouting needs a, needs to give their head a shake. Justin Hall not being in the lineup, we could have told you in Toronto. Hall we could have told you. Hall Petrie is tough, real tough, mm -hmm. dude. Petrie into the sun. Into the sun. And, That's and, enough. And and I think uh, you look at the you look at the talent they have, and you go, well, they should should be better. But is is the is this team is this Detroit team inspiring anyone? Is anyone like, holy crap, they're up and coming, and there's lots of talent? I look at a team like Montreal, who admittedly has made some weird draft picks, but they got the Lane Hudsons coming up, and they've got you know I'm not talking about like Nick Suzuki, who I think is the second coming of Saku Koivu. I don't know if he's going to be a hundred point guy. But I think he's a valuable player and a great leader, and, and they're going to be fine. I look at Montreal in two years, and I look at Detroit in two years, and I think Montreal gets a goalie. I feel like Montreal's on a better trajectory. It's a big ass, though. Getting a goalie? Yeah. They'll yeah. find a goalie. Yeah, they'll no, find a goalie. A, it, Steve's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's, they'll if, find one. If, like, goaltending is your biggest issue, it's hard to find that guy. That's the Flyers. They've been looking yeah. for a goalie our entire life. Yeah, 30 years. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I had a qu- couple of questions there. One, Detroit fans seem content with Derek Lalonde. He's been there for two seasons, and I think more of the blame should be on Iserman and the guys he's giving to Lalonde. Mm-hmm. So, yep. but I, I, I would look at it and I'd say I can see how Iserman might put the blame on Lalonde and say I think I built a playoff team and they collapsed with Dylan Larkin going out early, uh, late in the season. You know, so. I don't know. If Eisenman says, I gave you all the right pieces and you failed, then maybe it's Derek Lalonde's fault and his job is on the line. So that's an interesting piece there. Where do you guys sit on Tortorella? If I just close this out, where do you guys sit on what happened here? Do you believe Tortorella's sequence of events that he was told of the Detroit goal once the empty netter went in? Or do you believe that it happened, he was told before, like 30 seconds before that, while the goalie was out? I think this was always the game plan. Yeah, it was always the game plan. Um, uh, you're going for a win. What What do you do? Oh, uh, well, let's stop then. Let's stop trying. Mm-hmm. No, because if if they if they were eliminated, why would they go for the regulation win? Like that doesn't make sense, right? I yeah. I think I think the the time between the decision and the goal yeah. were it was too slim, right? That's kind of where I landed too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't think you can make a call like that. And I don't think Torts would do that. I don't think you can unpull the goalie just because you were eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. It, and 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 Philly was desperate. They had to do it. It reminds me a little bit of They had uh, to do it up until Detroit scored. Yes. Yes. There there was a <laughs> remember there was a night like Kyle Lowry hit a buzzer beater to send a playoff game to overtime and there was like a walk off home run for the Jays. And yes, could, I was at that was the uh uh that the Edwin one? Wow, that was the Edwin one. I was at it and I walked outside oh, to the Raptors who, uh, the Raptors fans coming out of Scotiabank at the and, same time. And those moments, I believe is how it went. Those moments were I think um exactly a minute apart. Mhm. You know, it's just, it works out that way, right? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, a final thing, uh, the pens. <laughs> you're you're talking about the pens there and Latang and all that stuff. Did you guys know that uh, Malkin, Latang, Carlson, and Crosby all played 82 games this season? Wow. And when I read that last time. That has night, to be the first time. Uh, it's got to be. Has to be. When, when I saw that, I said, oh, so you know what you have. Yes. You got them all healthy for 82 games. Who has gotten Eric Carlson for 82 games? It's unbelievable. It's That's crazy. so many games. So well, I, I don't I, think there's any excuse for Kyle moving forward. You know what you have. And here's the other thing, man. Okay, so Ned is up. Nadalkovic is up. And you probably can re-sign him. But the only guy who is like UFA of any consequence that you knew he was probably going to retire anyway is Jeff Carter. Like that doesn't free a ton of cap space for them. They're going to have to move off of like guys who have real value here. Like you could trade Carlson. Anybody would take him at a little bit retained, right? Like mm-hmm. that anybody looking for an offensive defenseman would take Eric Carlson. Um, but you are going to have to retain. But that's also if you're going to do it less than 12 months later. Chris, the guy you acquired. Here's what kills me. Yes. Agreed. But you got it. If you're going to oh. make a mistake, make it quickly. Right. <laughs> that's the thing. If you're going to make a mistake, own it, move on. Boom. Done. If you're going to make a mistake. Make it over the course of half a decade. Chris Letang, 36, four more years on his deal. Oh, no. OK. Oh, boy. Uh, Evgeny Malkin. 37, two more years on his deal. Mm, OK. Um, I don't know how you feel about Brian Rust and Ricard Raquel. Eh. 30, 31. Both of them making around five million bucks. Both of them have four more years left. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. Yep. Yeah. And 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 so when we and then you know Graves, who I believe is sitting on the uh, sideline with long term injury, and Nolachari as well. This team has got to get younger, and they're going to have to make some really tough decisions. To me, like y- y- you got to start to rebuild the defense around like Marcus Patterson, oh, like he's, who's 27. Oh boy. Or you move off of him. And you get some value Restock back. Restock the damn cupboard. They got nothing in it, man. They they got a few guys and Dub- who might turn into depth guys. Dubas is good at finding those guys. Oh, depth yeah. Guys. Really, good, really good at that. College free agents, Europeans. Yep. But I just, yep. I don't know, man. I think this is the, this should be the turning point for the, the Penguins. And I, for one, am ready to see uh, McKinnon Crosby in, in uh, Colorado. By the way, um, <laughs> to our goalie conversation about uh the habs yeah yeah. uh you know oh just get a goalie so i tried to look up the last time the flyers had a vesna nominee 
I couldn't. Find, That's not fair. Vesna the nominee. Well, I couldn't find nominee, but the Flyers have a Vesna winner more recent than Detroit. And okay. this is a That's team, weird. Wow. <laughs> this is a team. No, well, I can't even find the last time Detroit had one. The Flyers had Pelly Lindbergh. Oh. Um, in 1985. He was great. Um, and I know Hextall won one as well. Oh, Hextall won one in 87. Um, and Detroit, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. There's a Bernie Perrant one in 75 for the Flyers. Where the hell's Detroit? Have they ever had one? Oh, there it is. Terry Sawchuk, 1955. There you go. The Toronto Maple Leafs have beaten the Bruins in a playoff series more recently than Detroit has a Vesna winner. Yeah, but they've had good goalies. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. And they also, sometimes they didn't need to. Like, nothing against Chris Osgood, but, like, when you have Lidstrom. Adequate. Yeah, adequate's fine. Yeah. But I think this Detroit team needs a solid, like, great goaltender. I think Eisenman needs to rethink the Huso lion rhymer trio. What would you do with that? I don't know. You gotta like, keep Huso. Huso's that was been valuable for weird them. Huso the can't moment. stay healthy. Yeah. Like it was weird Huso, from the moment they locked it up. You can't rely on Billy Huso, unfortunately, to be your everyday starting goaltender because he can't stay healthy. And he's locked he's, he's locked up through next season, so he's gonna be on the team at four point seven five million. And you hope that it's a healthy year for him. Mm -hmm. But he's he's so he's gonna be on the team. It's gonna be Alex Lyon at nine hundred K as the backup. And I think you move off a Rhymer and I don't know if maybe there's a another depth goalie because you always need a, more than enough goalies. There's got to be somebody else you can bring in there in place of Rhymer. There, mm -hmm. I do not understand why Lions signed that deal for that little. Yeah, you know, like you had a really good run as the backup goalie for the team that went to the Stanley Cup final. And yep, you signed a nine hundred thousand dollar deal with a non playoff team to be uh, one of three goalies. I don't who, think there was. Who told you to make that career choice? I don't think there's room for him in Florida anymore. Didn't yeah. have to be Florida. I mean, right. like Detroit was the best situation you could find. Mm. You're sure? Uh, All right. Something you should keep in mind, too. Here are the UFAs for Detroit. Oh, boy. Perron. That's tough. Kane. That's tough. Sprong. That's they, tough. Oh, they'll really? get they'll Christian, get that done. Christian Fisher. He's too good. Oh, okay. Zach Aston Reese. Austin uh, Zernick. Uh, and then okay. Shane Goss is bare. Now here's the RFAs, which is even more interesting. And these three RFAs are the ones. That, oh, it's, by the way, James Reimer's a UFA too. But okay. yeah, I think we're. I think they're probably moving on from that. Here's Detroit, by the way, who has 81 million dollars in salary cap this year. Have to resign Lucas Raymond, Oy. Joe Valeno, Ooh. and Moritz Sider. Oh. Oh, that's you've got that jo sucks. Justin Hall making three point four for two more years. Jake Wallman making three point four for two more years. Oli Mata making three million for one more year, and Jeff Petrie two point three million for another year. They um, did not need to make that. Move. And also <laughs> Ben Ben Sherratt, and who has his value? Like I'm not I'm not disputing that Ben Sherratt is their highest paid defenseman right now at for 4. the next. Month for the next month until <laughs> un until cider resigns, but that's yeah. four point seven my five million dollars mm -hmm. for a guy that's supposed to be your playoff performer, but you guys can't get to the playoffs. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, no, I know, Adam. I know. Nobody's saying that they're not good. Everybody's saying a lot of this doesn't make sense, and I think the pro scouting department should be sweating right now. They've done a Eiserman's done a very good job like the job done in New Jersey where they've kept the top end of the contracts really low. Yep. Like having your highest paid defenseman make $4.75 million is a tidy piece of work. Having your top forward make $8.7 million is really good. But that middle area where you're handing out these $4 million or $3 million to Justin Hall and just loading up on those mid contracts is a little questionable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But then Derek, uh, Derek, Dylan Larkin goes down and, and then you're, just, you're dead. Screwed. Yeah, you're dead. Yeah, and so, you can't get anything back. And you go on a terrible losing streak and get no goaltending, and yeah. you can't you can't build a whole roster out of mid players. Yeah, and like <laughs> he comes back and he keeps you alive, mm -hmm. but it the damage well, was already long. done. It was I, already I mean, taken out of your to, to end the season. The Washington Capitals went four four and one in their last ten. 
And that was that's not that's not ten games in their last stats. nine. Yeah. That Man, was watch, their heroic. Uh, watch the Caps just go on a roll here. Like, yeah, but you're <laughs> telling me maybe. If you're one of those teams, and you look at how bad the Caps were, and even bad down the stretch, and you miss the playoffs to that. Yeah, that sucks. Hey, uh, speaking of uh, the Habs, need a goalie for their rebuild. Charlie Lindgren. Charlie R- Lindgren should have heart votes. Like, yeah, he was dude, great. Yeah, he was he great. He got the Caps to the playoffs. There's one. Like, wait a sec. If you went Lindgren Allen. Well, why are you thinking that they can just take him? What are you talking about? No, no, no. <laughs> that they take them. They had them. Right, is right. That's what I'm trying to point out. Right, right. Like Oh, you mean you mean if they stuck if they had Lindgren stuck and, with yeah, it. And they, then you yeah, got yeah, Montembeau okay. Primo. I thought you meant like this offseason, go take him. Yeah. <laughs> like, what you... Take him back. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they should just do it anyway. You know what? They should go and take Patrick Waugh from the bench of the New York Islanders, put take him in put him in a jersey again. Slavkovsky for Lindgren. <laughs> who um, says no. Uh I want to point out just an oddity mm-hmm. in stats. So I'm looking at Alex DeBrin Cat's season. 82 games. That's so many games. Played 82 last year. Last year, he had 27 goals. This year, 27 goals. Ooh. Last year, 39 assists. Okay. This year. 39. Close. 37. 40. Oh. So. Whoa. Six, moving on up. 66 and 67 points. Okay. Uh, his penalty minutes are 45 and 34. Plus minus differential between last year and this year. Oh. This year, he was a plus one. We. Last year, a negative 31 in Ottawa. So that's the major change. Oh, <laughs> Random. Now, again, plus minus doesn't matter until yeah. it's crazy. Until it's absolutely bonkers. And then you're like, something, something went wrong there. He should be better than that. I think that ideally Detroit was hoping to get the 35 goal scorer that everybody He was he on a crazy pace to start the year. Yep. And he tailed off to a very mid-level. By and the end of it. they... Uh, no... I was about to say, and Detroit gave up Frank Nazer to get him, but no, that was uh, Ottawa. Mm-hmm. Ottawa gave up the seventh overall pick for this guy. Nazar? Nazar? I, I, I <laughs> assumed it was Nazar, but I kept hearing yeah, Nazar on the too. broadcast. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, am I I, ass- I always assume the broadcast is right. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's the children who are wrong. Um, one that I've, I've wanted to bring up for weeks, but since we're on the topic of names. Yarn Croak. Yarn Croak. I say Yarn Croak. I say croak too. Okay, here's I, I've heard yarn croak a lot recently. Uh, we always think it's like Russians or something. No, Swedes are the most butchered names in hockey. Forsberg. It's Forsberg. Is it? It's Forsberg. Yeah, but that's their language. Oh. We're we're speaking English here. Okay. For- <laughs> Forsberg. Wow. All right? Wow. All right. <laughs> Wow, we're Matt speaking didn't like that. Whoa, <laughs> it was a joke, guys. It's a, it's a joke. It's just Whoa. joking. Where's the? Uh, it's a joke. Learn the, English, <laughs> Adam. What are your thoughts? Show Otani. What do you be a bigger star? What? What do you? Who the fuck said that? Stephen A. Smith. Smith well oh yeah, I forgot about that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a thing cool. he did. Yes, yeah. Adam. What are your thoughts on milk and honey? <laughs> I'm I'm ready to welcome to the melting pot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whoa. I'm uh, sorry. This is America, and we speak English here. Damn. We speak actually American here. <laughs> mm, and different. we have freedom fries. That's right. Um, but God, I'm so uncomfortable. Um, the uh, well, I don't even remember what the. Well, fuck. no, I think. Well, yeah. well, we're it's yarn croak. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yarn croak. It's yarn croak. You know where so I always hear this as fast as possible. I always hear yarn croak, and Maddie can attest to this because sometimes we'll play it in the office on uh, Kipper and Bourne. Oh, yeah. They're big yarn croak guys, both of them. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, should I trust Justin Bourne on his pronunciations? I think you can trust him on lots of things, but I'm not sure I trust him on pronunciations. I trust him on hockey breakdowns. Yeah. yeah not, but you not know what? That's a challenge to Justin you know Bourne. Prove I'm, that it's yarn croc, Justin I, Bourne. I'm, <laughs> Prove I'm, it. I'm going to throw out a theory. I don't think it's Caprio's. No, I don't th- <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's actually not. <laughs> you know what? Good point. Is there a soft <laughs> K in Greek? Because every other I every other letter is a soft one. No like, idea. Like Riprios or Yiprios or something. No Yiprios. idea. Go, go. You know what? Hey guys, let's let's go out after this and order some gyros. What do, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't know how to pronounce shit. Mm-hmm. We don't. It's gyros. Gyros. Uh, just to mention for Detroit, because we spent a lot of time criticizing them, they hit it out of the absolute ballpark with the Patrick Kane signing. 
Like, yeah, they did. Wow. You, you he, nailed it. And now he wants to go to Florida. So uh, good for them. <laughs> Great audition. Well done, everybody. Yeah, that was a spectacular move. They nailed that. I, I can't wait for May or something when the report comes out that Kane has it narrowed down to Florida or Boston. Can't wait. Yeah. Oh, it's probably going to be something like that. Just kill me. Hey, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And listen, it's playoff season. Uh, and, you know, maybe it's actually technically not playoff season. This is the this is the weird week before playoff season where players go down and get injured and yeah. you get sad. This isn't, this isn't the ride. This is the line before the ride, Ooh. which I always thought is worse. That is it is especially way, way worse, especially if you, you need a little bit of a pick me up. And listen, it's been a long winter. The economy's tough or, you know, sometimes it's just like I'm sad and I'm a fan. Could be that too. Uh, for whatever reason you need therapy, we want you to give it a try with better help. Remember that you can get matched with somebody very, very quickly through this, a lot faster than other therapy. Uh, as well, uh, you can, you know, you could comment on or you can talk to each other via text. Uh, you could talk via phone and you could talk via FaceTime. Uh, we want you to find your social sweet spot with better help. Visit betterhelp today. Sorry, visit betterhelp.com today. BetterHelp.com slash SDP gets you 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Um, <laughs> so I do want to say this. We are, we've, we've gone hard at the Penguins and Red Wings, and I feel validated, by the way, based on my preseason projections. Uh, but oh, I, my God. But I do want to say that... Um, uh, we're idiots and our predictions were so I got bad. eight out of eight playoff teams. And I'm a, that's great. Yeah. You did. In in the West, I got eight out of eight. Good for uh, you. You guys were six out of eight in both conferences, and we we're all three six uh, out of eight in the East. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. Oh man, My not bad. Yeah. Well, the Sabres killed us all. I Sabres and yes. the Devils. Um not Yeah, the bad. Devils, man. Yeah. Uh but I also want to say I just want to say that um uh the Washington Capitals deserve a heck of a lot of credit. Yep. That that is like old man strength. Mm -hmm. You know, like when they talk about dad strength, your dad, you, you know, you've been working out at the gym and you're like, come on, dad, let's do a, let's arm do an wrestle. arm wrestle. I don't think I've ever. And your dad just, dad. well, you know how some dads are like, yeah, all right, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, and then yeah. dad just, just destroys the 21 year old because they're, they got dad strength. Yeah. I've lifted kids with these hands and groceries <sighs> and I've put, to, I put shelves together and Ikea furniture. Um, hey, uh, I, I think that uh, those groceries will take two trips. Fuck, did you just call me? Yeah, right? What? Right? <laughs> um, the Washington Capitals are old. And, you know, but depending on who you, who you ask, they're not maybe that good either. But that really doesn't yeah. matter. They're in the playoffs. And mm -hmm. I think that they deserve their flowers. And so let's do a little game called Say Something Nice About the Washington Capitals. Ooh. Okay. Despite going four, four, and two with a negative seven goal differential in your last ten games to end the year, mm -hmm. I think you did a good job by being very mid and making the playoffs. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> I'm not it really. You stink. I'm not impressed. We, you know what? We were right too with saying calling it the Metropolitan. It is I've, the Metropolitan. Like they didn't. They didn't win their spot. Listen, they didn't lose it, though. And all the other teams did. Everybody else stunk really hard around them, and they stunk a little less bad. Here. What did I say at the beginning of the season was the big difference between the Penguins and the Capitals? I don't know. The Capitals have already started restocking the cupboard. Yes. They've had draft picks, and they've done well with those draft picks. Connor McMichael, 18 goals, 33 points. As we've said, the better Connor Mc. Yeah. Alexi Protus, uh, 78 games played, 29 points. Mm -hmm. It's not bad mm -hmm. for a young guy. Sonny Milano, mm -hmm. only 23 points. He got 15 goals out How of this old is Sonny castaway Milano? from the Ducks. Uh, 27. Okay. So maybe a little older than you think. And the Capitals' leading scorer, you guessed it, Dylan Strom. Yes, it's the first time in Ovechkin's career that he is not the leading scorer. And how about this? The fifth leading scorer on the Washington Capitals is still a guy they traded a month and a half ago in Anthony Mantha. Oh, he played 56 games for them. And the trade was uh, traded from Washington to Vegas for a second round pick in 2024 
and a fourth round pick in 2026. So, I, I, how many second round picks has Anthony Mantha been traded for? It was uh, like two in Edmonton, two for two Washington. Edmonton. Yeah, he, remember he was, wasn't he traded to Edmonton? No, he was traded to uh, Detroit, he was from, Detroit to Washington. The tra- that was a crazy trade. Trade <laughs> so Anthony Mantha traded from Detroit Not to man. Washington mm-hmm. for Jakob Vrana, Richard Panic. Um, a uh, first round pick in 2021 that turned into Wyatt Johnston. Oh man. Uh, wow. So that uh, ended up getting flipped and a second round pick in 2022. Uh, I don't know who that person is. Um, the Capitals, you know, got some great performances out of this guy, out of that guy, but their youth movement is already in the system, already in the NHL paying dividends and that's what helped get them over the line to the playoffs that and they got like 25 goals in the second half where there were only eight in the first half from alexander ovechkin ov came on hard the second half of the season it's a huge 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 swing from being a guy you can like barely rely on for anything Mm -hmm. to oh he's lethal again after the all-star break it seemed like he just reset and everything was spectacular for him yeah we we started being like uh you might not beat gretzky and he was like (laughs) mother watch out i i do i was mean in my compliment section to the capitals so i do owe somebody in the capitals organization the biggest apology who is it lauren oshi Lauren Oshi, I thought, had cursed the Capitals into oblivion <laughs> by, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, she put out a Instagram story asking for, hey, is anybody in the local area available to do WAG jackets for the playoffs? So we want to do our Washington Capitals playoff jackets for all the WAGs there. And Washington I thought yes. she cursed the team. Yes, that was it. You can't go do that. And then you're out. Of, you're not in a playoff spot right now, but you might be. And then. What the Capitals did, they ended up making the playoffs. And now we have from Taylor Strom, uh, the partner of Dylan Strom, uh, Ryan Strom. Which Strom am I going with? Dylan. Dylan Strom. <laughs> the WAG jackets that Lauren Oshie coordinated. Oh, cool. So shout out at Red Bull Tropical who screenshotted Taylor's uh, uh, Instagram story of the WAG jackets. I'll oh, nice. go closer here. Cool. These are the Caps WAGs jackets for the playoffs. What do you guys wow. think? Sexual. Licking a stamp, right? Is that what it's supposed to be? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Putting their stamp on the season. Yeah. I like it. It's very fashion. It is. I like to see them on. Yeah. You know, but they're they've yeah. they've been secured. I want one. <laughs> I, I want one. what's wrong with that i don't think there's anything wrong with that and they look cozy and nice my so, shout out i want one so i i formally apologize to laura noshi you were correct in hunting down these wag jackets my shout out is to charlie lindgren who is a goalie that nobody was paying attention to before this game but this season started and um this is a guy that that played 50 games for them this year he started 48 25, 16, and 7. That's amazing. Wow. A 9, 11 save percentage. This year, that's pretty good. That's amazing. That's amazing on a team that can't score a lot and can't defend. Well, not at first they couldn't. It's uh, it's crazy. And the other guy I want to shout at is like Ovechkin. By the way, I predicted, I believe, Steve, you, you had Ovi at 30 goals. I had him at 35. He scored 31. So congratulations. Hey. Oh, um, do I win? I don't know what you win. I think I, you probably said 31. Just to be a dick. No. Oh, no. I said 35. I did say 35. Where where are our apples? That's a good question. They're in a store somewhere. Yet to be purchased. I Um, I forget. They're on a produce track. I forget what the apple bet was. Yeah. (laughs) I I do too. (laughs) Adam, you don't don't have to get us apples as long as you get me a wag jacket. Okay. I'll get you a wag. I'll (laughs) I'll message Taylor Strom. We go way back and uh, I'll I'll make it happen. All right. Who who are you the wag of? The Leafs. <laughs> You're going to Leaf swag jacket. The whole team. <laughs> the whole team. I'm your sweetheart. I like that. <laughs> Let's do the press conference. Oh, oh, we're done? Yeah, we're done. I thought I thought you were shouting out Charlie Lindgren. <laughs> no, I just I just say, well done, Charlie Lindgren. 9-11. Yeah, and also, they got to figure out Darcy Kemper, but that's an extra problem. Yeah, the rock. well. Presser. On the note of wags, yeah, little spoon, goaded, being the little spoon, yeah, it's goaded. It rules. Except I don't call it little spoon. 
What do you call it? Well, because my wife is tiny. So I call it jetpack. I like that. She's my little jetpack. <laughs> don't, don't you just like a good snug? I get it. Oh, big cuddler. Nice These big were, cuddler. I think, this had a sneak peek. Uh, the Lady Leafs swag jackets from games one and two. This was last year. A lot of them. These just look like the basic... Um, those are Toronto Maple jackets Leafs. from the Leaf store, right? Yeah, anybody can buy those. Those are Drew so, jackets, and yeah. So they, it looks like they just went with the the Drew House jackets uh, last year yeah. for the Leaf swags. I don't know. I like those Maddie. Guys. Just straight up. Yeah, Maddie those aren't was, as good. What's your opinion on this? <laughs> they aren't as good as the other ones. No, no, the other ones are like campy. I love them. But yeah, what are these ones? These ones are. I don't know. They're just kind of basic. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> The other one has like I love the idea of like licking the stamp. That's so funny to me. Do, like, do they get a new one every year? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Maybe there's something there where we go, we try and collect all 16 teams as wag jackets, and we review them and rank them. Oh. Maybe there's something there. Wait, actually, what, is, what does wag stand for? Wives, wives and girl. girlfriends. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I just keep saying wag. Uh, and actually, if you if you look in the distance, you can see uh, the tower that they own, PWC. Stands for people with coats. Uh, stop it. What? Hey, okay, can we just that move on? Good. What? <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that was really good, actually. I forgot to bring this up in the main show. The Coyotes will play their last game tonight. Wow. Mm. Uh, that's just depressing as hell. And I guess we'll talk about it Friday. Will there or won't there be something thrown on the ice? My bet is absolutely yes. <laughs> I was listening to the CJ show yesterday and and Julian was talking about because CJ had never been to Mullet Arena and he's going to be there for the last game. And Julian's like, you know, Mullet Arena, it's something you have to experience. And like, it's what if you're a hockey fan, you have to go down there and see a game. I was like, Julian, they're not going to be able to watch a game there after Wednesday. Tucson. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> um, I, I'd like to ask CJ this and I, I'm sure there's an answer. The Tucson Roadrunners don't do poorly. No, they do really well. They, I, I believe that they have a ten thousand seater too. Right. And they're, why so they're, weren't the Coyotes moved there? They'd probably still be there. Well, and why is why Tucson is, leaving? Why are the Roadrunners leaving and going to Mullet? Yeah, that because yeah, I don't agreements. understand that at all. Because oh. the, there's a lease agreement. There's some sort that, of hockey needs to play. Yeah, they're saying that. Um, the Morello wants to maintain whatever agreement he has with the university and that right. he might move that because he still owns he's still going to own the Tuscany Roadrunners so he's Tusc he's going to put stop them calling them wait Tuscany. he owns the Tucson Roadrunners <laughs> he, he's not selling Tuscany he's going to keep them under this agreement with the NHL he's still going to own the AHL team isn't the very obvious solution there put the Coyotes in Tucson and put the Roadrunners in Mullet what like, no, from the beginning. Like, obviously not now. But they're like, okay, let's put let's put um the this NHL team in a vacuum cupboard. Right. And let's have this AHL team play in a decent size arena that is well attended. I, I don't understand that at all. I don't know the logistics of like, is the arena could they make it NHL ready and all that stuff? Is it Tucson a good market for the NHL team? I don't know. I don't have any of those. I'm answers. sure there's reasons. It's right. Just, that's what I'm saying. That's what like it seems so obvious. So I don't understand. If it seems so obvious and it was the right solution, I'm sure the Coyotes wouldn't have done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I was like, oh, Jesse, Jesse. Ah, he cooked good. Yeah. Um, let's get to uh, a question here. Which team uh, are you most disappointed in this season? Who had the most disappointing season from all of the NHL teams? Uh, the Leafs, they have to play the Bruins. No. Um, hmm. Look at the standings here. My quick pick is Columbus. Based on how the entire season played out, I had them a little higher. The kicking it off in preseason with the Mike Babcock stuff, you completely like from there you're tanking your season and they've gone on to do nothing. So Columbus is mine. It's it's a bat it's a four way battle. No, pick no, one. No, pick one. Because I have to make a pick too. Yeah. So pick one. Yeah. You can't just like cover the league and do a good analysis. Hey, you know, everything. it's all the teams that just missed the playoffs. <laughs> I uh <laughs> It's uh, St. Louis, Minnesota, Calgary, and Seattle. Four-way tie. You know, whenever I get dumped on, <laughs> screamed at from both sides. Oh, Matty Mike. Matty Mike. Oh, what's up? Steve, what happened to your Sharks merch? It's still in my house. Mm -hmm. Are you still a Sharks truther? 
<laughs> oh yeah, I think they could come back. I still do. I like that. I think. I think Steve's biggest disappointment is the sharks. The sharks, because yeah. I okay, they're the biggest disappointment because I wanted to keep the bit, <laughs> yes. and they were so bad I didn't get to keep the bit. You know what? Good answer. I was going to say Buffalo, but yeah, good answer. Mm -hmm. That's all. Adam, who you got? No, I was also going to say uh, the Sens and Devils. There, now you get no one. Who did you pick? The Sharks. Okay, the Sharks. No, but give a real answer. Uh, Sens or the, Devils? The, the Sabres. The Sabres. Um, oh. The Sabres, um, I really thought um, we're going to get good goaltending. They were going to shoot the lights out. Um, and... It's like it was around Christmas where I was like, I don't think it's coming, folks. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm I'm m my pick is the Devils. I, I think they made the playoffs. Same thing. Uh, you lose a couple guys to injury. Of course, and then they're important guys, you know, Hughes and Hamilton. I get it. Um, couldn't figure out their goaltending all year. Probably should have had Markstrom. Calgary's a pain in the ass to deal with. What's new? Um, and uh, I, I think that the Devils will be back and on fire next year. Yeah, but you saw what the Flames got, you know. They got to piss off their goaltender that wanted to yeah. stay there and now doesn't want to be there. Yeah, but they also got, which is what they always get in these situations, and uh, I think they did very well. I, think I, I hate their owner viscerally. <laughs> I, I, I wish good things on Craig Conroy and on the Flames fan base. Murray Edward, Edwards can fuck off. I think we have to wrap because Steve's food is here. and he needs oh, Let's to wrap it up. Oh, sick. All right, sick. Steve's food's here. We got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget, we'll have playoff you previews might coming run up. And go get the Uber guy before he leaves with your food. Okay, playoff previews coming up this week towards the end of the week. And SDP VIP coming out tomorrow. Love you! The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.